I don't think anyone told Ikit Claw and Storm Runner, the player in this replay, that ranged units are terrible in domination. Certainly, Clan Scryer would like to argue otherwise. Today, Ikit Claw is going to be taking the Eye on the North map, which certainly is a map that can favor ranged units, if any, in domination against the Empire. Let's get to the builds quickly. Ikit Claw on his Doom Wheel leading the way. We've got a Warp Fire Thrower, the Regiment of Renown Avalanche Mortars. The uh, Death Globe Mortars. <laughs> got the Plague Claw Catapults there. Some Clan Rats with Shields, Wolf Rats for a little bit of capture weight. Skaven Slave Spears as well. Keep in mind, Expendable Units have terrible capture weight, so these Skaven Slaves uh, have terrible capture weight. And the Clan Rats do not, because they don't count as Expendable. Not without campaign techs. Anyway, let's get the Empire build real quick. Got Boris the Todd up in the air. Some Swordsmen with some ranks to give them some extra leadership and stats. Got uh, Crossbowmen as well. Bright Wizard, some Mortars interesting choice. I mean, I, I like the idea of the non-direct fire on this map, but specifically against Skaven, I mean, I guess it's good for clearing out, like, huge hordes of chaff. It just doesn't do it very quickly. I think probably a rocket battery, like, you just combine these two into a single rocket battery, and that's probably a much better pick. The armor piercing values are better. Overall DPS is better. Anyway, let's get to the reserves now. There's also some Empire Knights over here. Or the Skaven's Reserves. Should be the Clan Scryer banner, honestly, with this particular build. But we've got the Council Guard. We've got the uh, Regiment of Renown Rat Ogres, the Pit Fighters. And then, of course, the Teeth Breakers. Uh, yeah, a couple of Poison Wind Globes as well for more weapons teams. We've got one Death Runner, one Gutter Runner with Poison Slings, two Rat Ogres, four Skaven Slave Spears, one Slinger, and two regular Sword Skaven Slaves for the Empire. Demogriff Knights with Halberds, so Zintler's Reichsguard coming off of Vanguard. We've got the Hellstorm Rocket Battery, two Great Swords, two Outriders with Grenade Launchers, Swordsmen, some Freeco, and yeah, that's it. And we are to it. So it gets going to get started. Moving on over to try and wreck Boris. Uh, in terms of Ikit's loadout, he does have Howling Warp Gale, which can freeze Boris in place for 14 seconds, and even more for the Overcast. Warp Lightning also is nice, efficient. AoE magic damage can be used to blow up lots of different units. Speaking of getting blown up, oh boy, here we go. Avalanche Mortars. The explosion changes, and I think they also maybe just got a straight-up buff, too. Leads to them being a savagely brutal unit. They just delete a Swordsman, which, I mean, granted, it's just an Empire Swordsman there. They do have some Chevrons, but they're not that expensive at the end of the day. They're maybe, what, 500 points or so with those Chevrons? Um... But still, Plague Clock Catapult plus the Avalanche Mortars are going to open up and just make a lot of this Empire infantry very, very sad. On the other side, we've got the Wolf Rats pushing up. More Skitar's Hellion coming off here. Skaven Slave Spears also kind of securing, or uh, getting ready to secure, I should say. The points are just now about to open up. Wolf Rats also forward pressuring here in a way is smart. I mean, some might call this an overextension, but if they can avoid getting charged by the Empire Knights, which they will not, that unit's done for. Um, the thing is, they're just tying all of these units up while, like, the warp fire throwers get into position. The slow cap, you can see the Skaven Slave Spears very slowly capping that side objective there, but we're missing a full engagement between Boris and Ikit here. We've also got the Clan Rats getting charged by Empire Knights. Not going to go particularly well for them, so uh, Ikit's going to have to get out of here, but thankfully he's got some, uh, the, not wolf rats, rat ogres rather coming off of reserves here. The Warp Fire Throwers actually come in. They're going to do a little bit of damage as well, but most importantly, the Teeth Breakers, Regiment of Renown, Rattling Guns. Oh man, and a brutal Howling Warp Gale just freezes Boris in place. He's now taking huge amounts of HP damage and is uh, definitely at risk of just getting absolutely uh, chased off here. Uh, Ikit could even come forward. I think right now he's a little bit out of range of his Doom Wheels ranged attack, but he could also come in here and just really put the nail in the coffin. Meanwhile, Morskatar's Hellion with the Wolf Rats is able to penetrate all the way pretty much to the artillery position here. Uh, there's not really a lot of anti-large to stop him, and uh, yeah, all swordsmen, you know, no huntsmen, it's just crossbows, right? Eventually does get focus fired, but managed to compromise that position significantly and kind of throw the Empire player way off. Uh, we've got some Demogriff Knights with Halberds now. I think they were brought out initially, but then the Morskatar kind of died anyway, so it looks like they're going to try and go back after these rat ogres maybe go after ikit claw himself but uh, man those swordsmen just instantly terrified and roasted by warp fire throwers land scryer units certainly are some of the visually most interesting in the game green warp fire and uh you know 
warp lightning and all that fun stuff. Definitely makes for a nice cinematic time. Also the purple of the death globes. And it gives a nice contrast there as it nukes. Oh man, those crossbows. That I think counts as a war crime actually. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the uh, yeah. Leg Clock Catapults also making some nice contact. They've been a decent unit for quite some time, but certainly the non-direct line of fire artillery on this map can be quite decent. I say that, and then I look at the Mortar with 300 value using half of its ammunition, firing for the entire duration, and then I just, you know, understand that the Mortar is still not that great, especially in a situation like this. Um, again, hindsight's 2020, but I think I just wouldn't generally take the Mortar in most situations. Uh, it's going to be in trouble, though, if he doesn't escape. He's got to run from the Demigriff Knights. Demis with halberds, unfortunately, don't have any snares or slows or anything to be able to actually stop Ickit so they can get some attacks on him. They're going to now have to pull away before they get in range of too many AP missiles. And the missile presence established is such that, like, the Empire... I mean, besides the fact that Stormrunner's also doing a great job just kind of blocking here, Skaven Slave Spears also come forward and just block and occupy these units. I mean, it's very obvious that they're going to lose here, but at the very least, they allow um, these ranged units to come in and get some pretty good work done. Avalanche Mortars are going to eat a charge here from some Empire Knights with a nice Flaming Sword of Ruin. It'll give them a Power Spike. Of course, Kindle Flame as well is the main component of that. Morse Guitars Hellion resummoned now back in the center objective able to terrify away those empire knights though not before they get some damage on the avalanche mortars we've also got some poison wind globes coming forward they are definitely the most cost effective and will be the most chosen weapon team uh just their up close dps is massive and it looks like the, <laughs> the empire player probably has their camera somewhere over here and actually cannot even see boris because he's literally behind that huge pillar so it's one reason why I recently noticed that Falcon has his minimap like max size, which I think I might start doing this when I'm actually playing, but anyway. The mortars, or the, sorry, the play the globes rather. Poison wind globes and the plague block catapults thrown in. Enough to deal with the Empire Knights, but the friendly damage also ends up routing. Clan rats here and uh, teeth breakers also getting some significant damage. They hit uh, the Poison Wind Contact effect, I think, is the only one in the game that can actually hit friendly units, and it will do significant damage. Heath Breakers should be able to come back, though. The Empire Knights also route at the same time, so they can they can maybe continue to contribute. More Skatars Hellion, Pit Fighters of Hell's Deep. All we're missing here is a uh, Packmaster to kind of provide a little heal blob for the Skaven, which I actually think will be a reasonably viable tactic in order to lock down an objective, maybe a side objective, or even the center objective, as long as you're not a against a superior Doom Blob. Um, yeah. But uh, no Packmaster for the time being, at least. Those Rat Ogres will just have to fend for themselves and not take any healing. Uh, Ikit is also fending for himself over on this side objective. I, I say for himself. These Rat Ogres are pretty much done for, getting charged by multiple Empire Knights here. Ikit's got to beat a retreat and try and get the heck out of Dodge. Get back over to where Boris is. Boris is basically heal capped, fully regenerated, but the Teeth Breakers come back at a very timely time. And right as the Plague Clock Catapults get terrified away, these guys are going to absolutely gat down Boris, quite literally. Or rat down Boris, I guess. Anyway, another Howling Warp Gale there right on time, and that should spell the end for the Elector Count of Middenheim. Rat Ogres continue to pressure. We've got some Pistliers, or Outriders, Grenade Launchers even, that attempt to come through, but they are uh, unfortunately immediately compromised. Free Company also, decent pick. I'd probably actually go way more Free Company against, uh, even in place of Swordsmen, just, I don't know, in, in Domination at least, against Skaven. I think they trade well enough against the Skaven low-tier infantry that it's fine, but oh no, the humanity, the Morse Guitars Hellion. <laughs> forcing a blob of the free company and they also are subjected to the avalanche mortars who managed to survive with a handful of models still intact enough to make a difference nice side push from the empire though in terms of objectives even though the empire is getting horrendously massacred here they are actually playing the objectives very well and uh, not too far behind in terms of victory tickets and certainly in a position to perhaps get a full three cap here we'll see council guard are now onto the center position this is a unit that Skaven should always take in Domination. Unbreakable units just tend to be very good in Domination in general, especially Unbreakable Infantry, especially Unbreakable Armored Halberd Infantry. 
Mitch, even though their stats are really not that great for the cost, to be honest. Uh, 50 melee defense with strength and numbers active certainly helps. Getting hit by rockets does not. So yeah, those rockets should have been in the starting army and just screw the mortars. Just get rid of the mortars. They don't do anything anyway. Morse Katars, Hellion though, and the Skaven Slaves, Rat Ogres all in the Empire's deployment zone, which means their, uh, you know, potential for a three cap is going to be significantly hampered. The overextension here of the Empire Fire Mage and these, uh, these are Zintler's Reichsguard? They are Zintler's Reichsguard. Look at that. They also just get massacred by Wolf Rats and the Doom Wheel, so... A rough time to be an Empire Soldier, for sure. A uh, good attempt. I have to say, I respect the uh, the tenacity to just, just keep up with the objective play, but going to be pretty rough in this late game. Demogriff Knights coming out once again. They're going to just run straight into Armor Piercing Missile Fire, which is definitely not the thing to do. Uh, rattling Guns and Plague Claw Catapults between the Stagger and the legit Speed Debuff. I mean, they just route them in a couple of seconds there, so pretty brutal stuff. At this point, I'm not sure the Empire has a lot of chance of coming back. I mean, we've got Skaven Slaves here fighting Hellstorms in the deployment. Pit Fighters can also swing down and help take out those Knights. Morse Guitars Hellion finishes off the last of the Mortar Crews here. And Skaven are now in a position to press for a 3-cap. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the army damage values as you would in a live cast, but I would guess that Stormrunner is very far ahead, uh, just, you know, given the situation on the ground here. That's more brutal plague claw bolt balls. Yeah, bombs, whatever. Uh, landing in the middle of those Empire Knights and the Empire mercifully. Uh, Empire player is going to throw in the towel there. Yeah. Oh, fun stuff. Interesting. Very interesting build. I mean, granted, Eye in the North is probably one of the maps where this is the works the best. So just be aware if you're up against a faction that can take some powerful uh, indirect line of fire shooting units and artillery. Definitely be aware of that on both sides here. We kind of discussed already the mortars barely pay for themselves over the course of the entire battle, whereas the rockets were able to come out towards the late game and pay for themselves in a couple of minutes. So it just kind of goes to show you there. Definitely just don't take the mortars, take the rockets instead. The rest of the build, I mean, Empire Knights are certainly a sensible choice. I might take Huntsman over Crossbowman, but they ended up doing an okay job, I guess. Um, Lore of Fire is also reasonably decent. Boris okay although if you're gonna pay for something that expensive and of him up on the griffin i think volkmar is just a better choice against skaven in all situations you know ground game he's gonna clear out skaven infantry he's a little, i mean it's obviously hindsight's 2020 against a subsist, specific scryer build like this he might get gatted down i will concede that point but again you can't necessarily always guess that your opponent's gonna do something like this i think this is a little bit unorthodox and Holy cow, look at the rattling guns there. I mean, a lot of that's overinflation from basically killing Boris twice, more or less. But still, I mean, good value on the Demigriff Knights as well. And I guess that's enough to put them up to that number. Um, yeah, Morse Guitars Hellion doesn't pay for itself twice, but tactically was very useful. Terrifying units away, just messing up the Empire's deployment zone. Avalanche Mortars also, they just straight up paid for themselves. 274 kills there. Plague Claw Catapults also did a great job. Wolf Rats, reasonably cost-effective. The Warcry Throwers had a tough time, but, you know, tactically they helped clear some units out pretty quickly from the center, so that's in useful in and of itself. Chevron Swordsman, eh, I don't know. Again, I think you just take Free Company instead, and especially from your reserves, like Free Company and Huntsman and Pistoliers and lots of Vanguard shooting, get in there and just mess the Skaven up quickly. I do like the Zintler's Reichsguard in reserve as well, but, uh, I mean, these great swords didn't end up really having any targets to go after. One of them could have been useful to take down the Council Guard, but all that armor-piercing shooting, there was no chance of them performing well. And in terms of tools to kill Doom Wheels, I think you're better off. Rather than taking the Demigriff Knights, I just, I don't know, in Domination, without any form of healing, it just seems tricky to operate them effectively against Skaven. I'd need to th sit and think about it a little bit, but I think just non-AP kind of volume of maybe Huntsman and some other units would be able to perhaps take down the Doom Wheel. Hard to say. Maybe you do need to take Boris specifically for that purpose, but I mean, Howling Warp Gale and Rattling Guns exist as we saw, so it's an interesting one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Empire vs. Skaven, Domination. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.